Hello, welcome back to the Rabbitohs Radio Podcast. No chaps today, but I do have good friend Darren Brownie. Brown, mate, how are you? What about the game? Yeah, not too bad, uh, Big Les. Yeah, look, uh, a disappointing result for us on Saturday night, uh, that loss to the Sharks. But yeah, look, to be expected, we've got half of our team out injured. And uh, yeah, it really showed the other night. Yeah, um, I mean, you still had some pretty tough performances. Guys like Talos Duncan off the bench. Jai Gray, I thought at fullback, was quite good. We still had some shining lights here and there. Uh, the thing that stood out to me, though, completion rates, stuff like that, it was pretty even. It was just off the back of errors. I just feel like we didn't really, um, you know, we didn't really execute off the back of those errors as well as what the Sharks did. We had a lot more possession. Um, talk to me about where you think it went wrong for us. Yeah, exactly what you just said, uh, Les. Uh, if you didn't watch the game and you just looked at the stats alone, uh, you'd probably think that, you know, the Rabbitohs won the game. Uh, the stats were quite even, but uh, the Sharkies turned over a lot of ball in the first half and we just didn't capitalise. Our attack just wasn't on the other night. And like I just said, that's to be expected. We've got our strikes players all out injured in terms of Cody and Latrell there, the go-to man uh, when we want to score points. And, uh, yeah, look, it was uh, disappointing. Uh, but, you know, we've got a couple of games to go towards the end of the season. We want to try and uh, get as many wins as we can. But uh, where to go wrong? Yeah, look, um, like I said, our, our ball, our, our, our good ball in terms of um, attack, yeah, it just wasn't on the other night. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't it? Um, you still had some pretty decent performances. Damien Cook had to fill in. Uh, a little bit in the outside backs yet again this week. He's really turning into a first grade centre. I don't know if the uh, the Dragons are going to play him in in that hooker position anymore just quietly. But um, yeah, look, it was just a little bit unfortunate, as you said. Just when we had the ball in hands, we didn't execute the best, um, and obviously didn't capitalise on the opportunities that we did have with the ball. Uh, as a forward yourself, mate, is there anyone in our pack that stood out to you the most? I thought Tom Burgess was really good when he came on. He really bent the line back in defence. And Talis Duncan, who's been good, pretty much, uh, you know, our, probably our best forward all year. He attacks the line. He, he looks like he's going to break the line every time he touches the ball. But I thought Tom and uh, Talis were our best the other night. Keon was just, uh, wasn't the normal game from Keon. Like I said, it was pretty hard. We didn't have much go forward in terms of uh, our forwards. but. Yeah, I thought Tom and uh, Talis, but the player that you mentioned just before, Jai Gray, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, three three line breaks on his own. I don't think the Rabbitohs had a, a line break between them apart from Jai Gray. So uh, without Jai Gray, you know, we probably would have got nil on the scoreboard. But uh, yeah, I thought he was outstanding, Jai Gray. And he has been, every time he pulls on the red and green jumper, he, he's very threatening with the ball. He it looks like something's going to happen every time he touches it. and His kick returns are really, been really, really strong. And uh, some of his defence is outstanding. Yeah, totally. Just cover defence out the back there. Um, you know, it is so good just without without the troll. And with how smart the troll is in defence, with his defensive patterns and stuff like that out there at fullback, it is good to have someone like Jai Gray who can cover well despite his size. Uh, you talked about the tackle bus, mate. 12 tackle bus, three line breaks. Um, he just for his size, it is unbelievable the amount of work he gets through compared to some other bigger fullbacks that don't usually take the line on as much. Um, he is certainly improving every single week, despite the results that we get week in, week out. He is definitely one of those guys that is improving. Um, what did you make of Fletcher Myers on debut? Thought he had a really solid debut. He had some really nice touches with the ball. Uh, he came in and um, you know gave the forwards a break with some tough carries. Came up with a couple of little errors, but that's to be expected. Uh, I thought he was really good, and he'll be better for the run. Uh, I'm sure he'll hold his spot there again uh, next week. And the main thing is he's a goal kicker, and that's something that we need, uh, and we have needed over the last couple of weeks. He, he slotted a nice goal there, but, um, yeah, I thought he was really good. A really good debut. Uh, and... Yeah, look, just I thought was quite strong in contact. We sort of spoke about that when he was playing New South Wales Cup. What was the big thing that was going to get him over the line to get into first grade? Uh, you know, Chaps was talking about just watching him into some past games, whether it be for Manly or Newcastle or now South Sydney, just how strong he is in contact. 
Uh, I thought that was something that stood out to me. There was a few opportunities where he looked like he was going to break through the line and get an offload there. Uh, definitely some positive signs. I think he's more of a center. I don't think he's a winger. Um, but look, obviously, he's going to take that wing spot over the next few weeks, depending on how Richie Kenner is as well. He might even slot into the centers potentially, and you bring back maybe an Isaac Thompson onto the wing. Um, talk to me about Dion there in the number seven. It, d- it just wasn't really working out for him uh, the other night. Yeah, no, it certainly wasn't. Um, look, he, he struggled a little bit the other night. Like we said, uh, the whole team struggled with their attack, so we can't put the whole blame on uh, young Dion. But yeah, things just weren't working for him the other night. Uh, he was trying, and you know whether he plays again there against the Melbourne Storm next week, I'm not sure. But um, Cody might be back. Uh, he's, hopefully, he'll be back from that calf injury, which ruled him out against the Sharks. But yeah, Dion, he struggled a little bit. Uh, a couple of balls hit the deck. Uh, they weren't finding the, the mark. And, uh, yeah, he's just his running game wasn't on the other night as well. So, But, yeah, struggled a little bit. Uh, young Dion, I really feel for him because he's playing in a team where uh, we've got a lot of our strike players out, like we mentioned earlier in the show. But, yeah, it's unfortunate uh, for young Dion. But uh, he's a great kid. He'll, he'll, he'll bounce back. And uh, hopefully he gets selected again this week against the Storm. Well, we said it in the um, in the preview for this game. He is more suited to that number six jersey. But also, not only that, I think he was making the right plays and he was making the right options. It was just the execution for me that didn't really work out for him. But I think it's a great sign. If they do go ahead and pick him next week, uh, if Cody Walker is still out, I think it's a good sign that he actually knows what the right option is. It's just about the execution, and I'm sure that he's going to work on that over the next few weeks. Uh, if he does, as I said, get picked in here again, I, I think that he's going to be much improved for the run. Um, look, it doesn't look like finals is in the reach at the moment, Brownie, but what do you think should be the focus now for South Sydney going into the end of the year? Oh, look, I just think we should be trying to compete on every play. Uh, we've got some tough games coming up, starting with the Melbourne Storm this week, uh, Thursday night. It's going to be a tough one at Allianz Stadium. Uh, Melbourne are in some really good form over the last couple of weeks. They got beat on the weekend, so very rarely do they lose two games in a row. Bellamy won't be too happy losing at home last week. And um, yeah, look, we just got to start to compete on every play and trying to build some combinations with the players that we've got there. Uh, all our strike players have been missing for quite some time now and uh, it really should be starting to come together a little bit better than what it is. And, yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit disappointing, but we want to try and win as many games as we can at the back end of the season. We're just ending the season on a positive note. Even if we don't win those games, look, look competitive, you know, complete high. Uh, just get the little things right, I think is going to be a big thing. I, I totally agree with you. You just want to end the season on a bit more of a positive note. Uh, one point that we sort of missed just going through some of the performances, Cam Murray, what did you think of him in his return on the edge there? Yeah, probably Cam struggled uh, on the weekend. Um, I was, you know, I was happy when I seen Cam playing on the edge, but after watching him the other night, I think... With our strike players missing, I think Cam's got to be in the middle of the field just trying to create some opportunities with his uh, foot speed through the middle. Uh, with that link man that he plays, I know Talis comes on and plays that role as well. Yeah, we really missed that the other night. But, um, yeah, it might be a consideration that uh, we're moving back to the middle for the remainder of the season just to get some experience through that middle of the, the middle third uh, of the field. But yeah, I thought he really struggled the other night and uh, yeah, I really feel for him. Well, I think it might've been Mick Ennis that sort of brought it up on Fox when uh, they were scoring a few of their tries, just McInnes playing that very similar role to what Cam Murray does throughout the year through the middle. If Cam Murray does go through the middle, who do you move Kaon back to the edge or do you move him into the middle I have one of these guys, either Sean Kepi or Mawali, coming off the bench. What would be your play there? Oh, look, um, Keon's an experienced edge player, but he's been going so good in the middle. Uh, it was just on the weekend that Keon was just off the pace a little bit. And uh, do we, you know, do you move Keon back to the edge and, and Cam in the middle? Uh, that's a, that's a tough one, uh, Big Les. But I'd probably say I'd move Keon just back to the edge for the remainder of the season. 
uh, put Cam back in the middle, especially while we've got no experience players in our spine. I mean, Cookie's there, but Cookie can't do it all on his own. Uh, put Cam back in the middle, and then Tallis obviously comes on and, and plays that that role like Cam Murray does. Um, you know, if if need be, we can shift Cam back out to the edge when when um, Cam Murray uh, when Tallis comes on. So yeah, it's look, it's a tough one, but uh, a couple of headaches there for the coaching staff. But I'd uh, I'd move. Turn on back to the edge and uh, put Cam in the middle. Yeah, look, it'd be interesting to see what Ben Hornby does do over the next week, uh, obviously picking this team list, and I'm very excited to see what the team does look like if there are any changes. And uh, look, as you said, just ending the season on a positive note over the next few weeks, maybe getting some wins on the board, but just looking like we're competing with these top sides, uh, I think is going to be a big thing for us. Just quickly touching on the Sharks, uh, we'll talk about one of these guys in the back line in a second, but just in terms of the forwards, is there anyone that stood out to you? Uh, I thought Royce Hunt was strong. Um, young Braley, the, the hooker, was very crafty, crafty around the middle. And, uh, yeah, look, they, they just worked together collectively a, a, as a team. They, I don't think they were great either. They turned over a lot of ball. It's just that we didn't have the ability to, to capitalise on, on all the possession that they turned over. So, I know they're a top four team and, you know, our defensive efforts were okay. But, yeah, I don't think they were really good either. On the night, I thought Sifa Talakai was great when he came on uh, down the, the left edge. He caused us a, a lot of problems. He pushed off uh, Michael Cheekham, I think it was there, and, and then went the length of the field and scored a try down the other end. So, But, yeah, I thought they just, as, as a team collectively, I thought they were really good. Yeah, look, I agree. Um, I just want to touch on this bloke before we uh, wrap it up. Kale Ido, uh, the centre. Gee, he caught us thus some problems out there on the edge. 208 metres, five tackle busts, two try assists, a line break assist and a line break in there. 95 post contact and then defensively uh, 16 tackles. What about his performance? I think he was most certainly probably one of the better players in the game. Yeah, he certainly was. He's a classy player. Uh, I right there. And uh, he's been in their system for quite some time. They've got a high opinion of him. Um, but, yeah, he was really, really good on the night and he caused us all sorts of problems. Yeah, he, he certainly did. He's definitely going to be one that's going to sort of pull them out of... As I, I think I agree with you. I don't think they were that great either. And they did turn over a lot of ball. And it looked like a lot of a tighter game than what it actually ended up being, obviously, with those uh, few late tries there from Trindle and, and you know. But, um, yeah, definitely he was a standout. Anyone else from South Sydney that, that stood out to you or any other points that you wanted to bring up? Oh, look, Les, I, I think we were pretty ordinary on the night. And I know Ben Hornby was trying to stay positive after the game in terms of the, our effort was really good. But I just think we were very, very poor with the ball. And uh, we had enough ball to cause some trouble against the Sharks. But... We just put, didn't put it together in terms of our attack. We are very clunky. Uh, just wasn't working for us on the night. And we've got to be much, much better against the Melbourne Storm on Thursday night because uh, they'll be really up for it, especially coming off a loss last week. What do you think the key is to beating Melbourne? Uh, obviously, we saw the Dragons do it the other night. So it can be done by some of these other, uh, other lower teams trying to push for the eight. What do you think the key is to beating Melbourne? Oh, you just got to beat them at their own game. You've got to compete on every play, and that's exactly what the Dragons did. They they played an up-tempo game. Uh, they kick well. Uh, you can't afford to make mistakes and give them, you know, good quality ball. And, and you just got you got to beat them at their own game. They they complete high, and it's just one of them uh, teams that you have got to play eleven out of ten to beat them. And that's exactly what the Dragons did. You know, they got in their face. Uh, they showed them no respect, and that's what we've got to do. And you've got just got to, you just got to be up for it, and you just got to want it more than they do. And uh, that's exactly what the Dragons did. Yes, yeah, certainly it was. It was a great game of football to watch, and it was tight right till the end as well. One of the better games of the weekend. So if the Dragons can beat Melbourne. It is very possible. Uh, we are praying for miracles here. We hope we get the job done there against the Melbourne Storm. Brownie, uh, great to have you on for another episode, buddy. Big Les, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Jim from the Quest Apartments. Uh, we run a competition over the last couple of weeks and he accommodated our winner 
with a night of, of accommodation at the Quest Apartments Woolaware. Our winner, Talon Smith, uh, had a great night. Uh, he got to meet Jim, so it was a big thank you to all involved there. And uh, we'll get Talon on the show to tell us about his experience. He had a really good time. He's a mad, passionate South Sydney supporter. Um, but, yeah, he had a really, uh, really good night out there at the Quest Apartments Woolaware. Uh, if you're looking for somewhere to stay, make sure you hit him up. I'll tell you what, some of the uh, photos on the Instagram there, I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful view of the stadium. You can see the whole thing. Um, and, yeah, very, very lucky, Talis, there. So be interested to have a chat to him and see what he thought of it. But uh, I guess the player as well, uh, obviously, that will be coming out very, very shortly. Uh, I'll make that up right now and flick it out uh, for you guys to have a chance to win some free pizza at Site Pizza. Uh, I'll tell you what, free pizza, uh, say no more. I'll be all over that. I, I wish I could be all over that, but unfortunately, I have to make the post. I don't get to guess on them. So uh, <laughs> make sure to get stuck into that. Uh, as I said, Brownie, great to have you on for another episode. Thanks, Les, and we'll uh, see you all on Teamless Tuesday.